Hello fellow misfortunates. All of you certainly know that Draven is an absolute monster when he gets ahead, since his passive allows him to snowball extremely hard with item advantage as soon as he gets a single kill. And analyzing a challenger Draven game in which everything just magically goes right wouldn't be all that interesting, would it? But what does an expert Draven player do when all the odds are stacked against them? How do you need to play when not only your teammates are mediocre at best, but you also accidentally grant your lane opponents a free double kill on top of that? Let's find out right now. So obviously things are not going well in this lane. Tristana has a huge gold and level advantage and she uses that advantage to roam and set up her mid laner for a double kill as well, while Draven is forced to stick to the wave and catch up by farming. If you try to follow your opponents into the jungle in a situation like this, matters only get worse because chances are you get killed again and fall even further behind. Farming on the other hand grants Draven solo experience which is crucial since champion levels make a huge difference in terms of combat power, especially during the early game. Draven mindfully retreats after pushing the minions into the tower to reset the wave, but then this happens. Draven expertly interrupts Zack's engage with his e-spell, then uses the incoming minion wave to block the skill shot and instantly turns the fight around as he sees that Zack does not have his passive. Tristana can't do anything after this because even with item advantage, she cannot fight a level 4 Draven while at the same time taking full minion aggro. Now because of all the solo experience in combination with that one kill, Draven and Tristana are actually even again. The fact that mid and top lane are both losing quite hard is still a problem for Draven, but at least he has counterplay in his own lane right now. And unsurprisingly, our challenger Draven immediately takes action as soon as he realizes Pike is roaming. This knowledge allows him to safely push Tristana into her tower and rush towards the fight in the mid lane, because Tristana cannot afford to risk going in 1 vs 2 here. Consequentially, Tristana is cut off from the fight entirely, and Draven converts his lane priority into a teamfight with numbers advantage. Numbers advantage is simply the most important factor when it comes to teamfighting in League of Legends, and by taking advantage of this, Draven now got himself in a position where he can potentially solo carry the game. However, the opposing Orianna is still hyper fed and can easily one shot Draven and all his teammates in one spell rotation. Navigating teamfights when you are under such a great threat is very difficult, but let's see how our challenger player deals with the situation. Note how Draven immediately retreats as soon as he realizes that Zack is sneaking behind them. This is crucial to AD carry positioning in general, because if the enemy manages to surround you, you can no longer kite backwards. This always means you get killed before you can do anything meaningful. However, by denying Zack his engage here, Draven is able to fully capitalize on this amazing Azir wall. Yes, Draven ultimately dies to the fed Aatrox here, but due to the kills he got earlier, he was still able to pick up 3 low health enemies and collect their shutdown gold. Now that we are rather deep in the mid game and Draven got some serious money on his hands, you are probably wondering about his item build. Instead of the standard shield bow collector core, our Draven here ended up pressing the subscribe button and went for Eclipse plus Essence Reaver. This build path is very interesting as you get huge burst damage for the early game while still being able to transition into a powerful crit build for the late game. Yes, Collector is typically a core item on Draven because of its synergies with your passive, but Lord Dominic's Regards is strictly more damage in all situations. And especially in this game, Draven gets insane value from the Giant Slayer passive against Zack and Aatrox. His rune page is fairly standard though, and for good reason, since Hail of Blades allows you to quickly burst down your target with 3 empowered auto attacks, further rewarding you for juggling your axes. 
as this reaver enables Draven to skip Presence of Mind and get Triumph instead, which is the only deviation from the standard rune page with this build. Now that I look at it, these items would also work quite well on Misfortune. Anyway, what Draven needs to do now in order to put his items to good use is to either bait out an enemy engage or hope that his teammates can catch an enemy out of position. In either case, his number one priority here is to not get caught himself. The weight of the entire team rests on his shoulders right now and just a single misstep can cost him the game at this point. Blue team is still very far behind in terms of map pressure, which means they cannot really contest anything their opponents do in the jungle. So far they have quote unquote only been losing dragons for this, but now that Baron is spawning this is becoming a real problem. Anyway, look at this beautiful old angle. Red team has made the crucial mistake of wasting the engage spells on someone who is not Draven, which gave our challenger player a crazy opening here. Pub quiz for you, after winning a team fight, what is your best course of action? If your initial thought is to immediately look for an objective to take while the enemy is dead and cannot contest you, well, then you are spot on. Blue team directly rushes towards Baron and even their tilted Camille is being useful as she, despite not teleporting to the teamfight altogether, at least AFK pushes the bot lane. As you can see, one misplay from their opponents was enough to free the blue team from the red team's oppressive jungle control. Draven now has the opportunity to break open the lanes with Baron buff and transition into the late game with everything still being up in the air. His teammates might be extremely weak, but all he needs is them to land their crowd control so he can follow up, as he is not dependent on their damage output whatsoever. Yet Draven still needs to be extremely careful not to get caught. Especially once his teammates die again, he has to play it safe and retreat. Having pressure with Baron minions is nice, but trying to siege towers with numbers disadvantage is just way too risky. In any case, because Draven's teammates continue to run it down, Red Team continues to get dragons for free. But keep in mind that it is naturally still better for Draven to watch and let it happen than to go and die alongside them to then lose the game instantly. Staying passive and biding his time is simply his best call if he wants to win in the end. Okay, let's be honest, would you have seen this opportunity here? Because I definitely wouldn't have. Normally you can't just sneak Baron like that while all 5 enemies, including their jungler, are alive. But they all show themselves mid lane and Draven being on 5.5 items can simply cut through Baron like a piece of butter. Truly an insane call and you need some serious grit to go for that. The most important aspect of this play is arguably the fact that Draven's teammates are getting a huge morale boost here. Even if they suffered during the early and mid game, the prospect of simply running away with this match now is likely to get them to try hard again. At the same time, you can probably tell from your own experience what is likely to go on in the enemy's team chat right now. Uh, never mind, Camille is still running it down. Anyway, do inting teammates really matter when you can crit for 1400 damage per basic attack? Yeah, at this point all it takes is one clean teamfight. Note how Draven is always staying just outside the range of Orianna's ultimate. Truly impressive kiting and micromanagement. Very well played. Oh and Camille did indeed redeem herself with that teleport flank when she respawned. It's all forgiven. Evidently, and most importantly though, tilt proof Draven players do exist and they do win some serious games. If educational videos like this one are helpful to you, you can get even more by clicking the link on your screen right there.